Well, tomorrow marks one month since the U.S. and European forces began airstrikes in Libya. President Obama and leaders from France and Great Britain, well, they all said that the need was dire and that the mission was humanitarian-based and would also be brief. Well, since that time, NATO forces have taken control, but the weapons and the intelligence on the ground in Libya are largely, well, from this country. While some people say that this is a just war, others say the justifications for getting involved were not only not good enough, they were wrong. Well, among those people, Alan Cooperman, a professor of public affairs at the University of Texas at Austin. He's also an author, and among his works, this book, The Limits of Humanitarian Intervention. And Alan, I know that you've written a lot about this, and something that you said was that the U.S. involvement in Libya is not only not preventing murder and suffering, but that it's in fact causing suffering by innocent people and also prolonging the civil war in Libya. Where is your evidence of this? Well, my, my evidence is, is that the claim that was made by the Obama administration that there was going to be a bloodbath, that there was going to be even genocidal violence, that uh, Gaddafi was deliberately, intentionally massacring civilians, my evidence is that there is no evidence of that in the other cities that uh, Gaddafi has captured, either totally or partially. And the latest data comes actually from Human Rights Watch. And what they found is that uh, the victims in Misrata, which is the third biggest city in Libya, only 3% of the wounded are women. And what that tells you is that uh, the violence by Qaddafi's forces is not indiscriminate. It's actually quite targeted. It's targeted at fighters because the fighters are male. If Qaddafi were trying to massacre civilians, there would be thousands killed not a couple hundred killed in Misrata. And if he were indiscriminately targeting civilians, then about half the victims would be women, not 3%. So uh, my concern is that there was no bloodbath ongoing. There was no bloodbath likely uh, in Benghazi. And uh, instead, the civil war essentially was going to be over a month ago. But then NATO intervened, led by the United States. And what that has done is sort of level the playing field. It's prolonged the civil war. T cities in the center of Libya on the coast have now changed hands two, three, four times. Every time they change hands, they're shelling from both sides and the civilians that are caught in the middle. So we didn't stop a bloodbath but we are prolonging and perpetuating the suffering of civilians in Libya, in my opinion. But, Alan, I've got to point out here, I mean, uh, you know, maybe that some of these places that you point to that Gaddafi's forces do actually have a uh, control in, uh, there's been targeted killings of these armed rebels, but the fact is we can't ignore that this is a man who said in a speech on television, you know, that he th was going to search every home and find people in their closets. So, you know, unlike, for example, Iraq and this false claim of weapons of mass destruction, here you have a leader who's actually saying, you know, by the way, I am going to come out and, and drag people out of their homes and kill them. And I know that, um, you know, this is something that Obama pointed to in his speech in terms of why we got involved in Libya. Let me play a little bit of what President Obama said, and then I'll have you respond. Sure. We knew that if we wanted, if we waited one more day, Benghazi, a city nearly the size of Charlotte, could suffer a massacre that would have reverberated across the region and stained the conscience of the world. So again, you know, President Obama pointing to this threat made by Gaddafi himself. Um, do you think that you, the U.S. and France and Great Britain, do you think that they should have just ignored Gaddafi as a madman? Well, I mean, I think if you actually listen to what Gaddafi said, he said that he would show no mercy to rebels. But he said that he would show mercy if the rebels gave up the fight, gave up their weapons. So he was very clearly saying he was going to target fighters. He made clear he was not going to target civilians. He wouldn't even target rebels who surrendered. So, um, and he was clear about this. So it seems to me that President Obama exaggerated the threat. Um, he exaggerated what Gaddafi said. In fact, misrepresented what Gaddafi uh, had said. And so would, you know, would there have been some killing? Yes, there would have been some, been some killing in Benghazi, but uh, the civil war essentially would have ended. The rebels were on the run. They were in mass retreat, and the war would have ended in March. And instead, here we are uh, in the second half of April, and the war is ongoing, 
and uh, people are suffering every single day. So as I say, I don't think we stopped the bloodbath, but I think we have perpetuated the war. And my rough guess at this point is that we've actually increased the net suffering uh, to civilians in Libya. That certainly wasn't the intention. And the only question for me then is, um, you know, why did Obama do this? Did he get tricked by the rebels who claimed that there was going to be a genocide? Or was he sort of in on that, uh, sort of a co-conspirator, exaggerating with the rebels the threat of a genocide in order to launch an intervention for other purposes? You know, of course, it's hard to say, though, Alan, you know, what would have happened, could have happened, uh, should have happened if the U.S. and, and NATO forces and, and you know, didn't get involved. Uh, you know, we just can't know because the fact is a month ago we did get involved. But I know you also said uh, that we should intervene no further until Gaddafi's forces actually prove that they're going to massacre civilians. Um, a lot of people would just find that claim a little rough to swallow um, to say, you know, let's wait until thousands of people are already killed until, until we get involved. Now, that's, 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 that's not what I say. What, you know, my, my argument is based on over a decade's worth of research. I've done research on the ground in Bosnia, in Kosovo, in Rwanda. I've also researched Darfur, Iraq, Afghanistan. And what you find is that rebels often use the same propaganda tactic. They start a war that they cannot win on their own. And the whole goal is to drag in the United States and its allies on their side. And the only way to get the U.S. to come in on their side is to claim that the government is going to massacre civilians. They did it in Bosnia, and it worked. They did it in Kosovo, it worked. And so my point is, if you're really trying to save civilians, what you should do is not play this rebel game. You should say to the rebels, if you start a rebellion, and the government responds by targeting rebels, we're not going to get involved. The only time that the West and the international community should get involved is if the government responds grossly disproportionately, if the government actually starts targeting civilians intentionally, then the international sh community should come in to stop a bloodbath, to stop uh, a genocidal type situation. So that was my recommendation, is that so long as Gaddafi is mainly targeting rebels, the United States should not be intervening there. And we should be using the potential of intervention and say, we would intervene if you start targeting civilians, and that would deter Gaddafi from targeting civilians. And the evidence so far is that Gaddafi is not targeting civilians. As I said, 3% of the victims are women. It shows that Gaddafi is targeting mainly rebels. It's certainly an interesting argument that, may, that you make, and important too, I think, to bring up some of these historical references with Kosovo, um, with the involvement in Bosnia, that some of these places specifically get more violent because they want to the West to involve Alan Cooperman, professor at the University of Texas and at Austin, and also the author of The Limits of Humanitarian Intervention. Thanks so much.